series of things in that nature that are a problem. Secondarily becomes the fact that there are view lines of things like the third meeting house that depending on where someone is in the district would be partially or completely obstructed by the scale of the height and scope of the proposed addition. Finally, there were concerns over the materials that are being used and what cost might happen to some of the materials had they been changed to what we consider more appropriate. When we looked at the entirety of the proposal, that led us to this conclusion. It's also important to note that of the seven members of my board, there is only one who believes at this point that a viable alternative option to expanding and renovating the batch could be done and would be appropriate. The remainder of the board believes in general that it is not likely that such a plan could be put forward. However, if something is shown to us, we always look at it. We do review things as they come to us. The last thing to keep in mind is the building itself. Of the building that's standing today, there is one part that was done initially in 1917, one part that was done roughly at 1930. That's what constitutes what most people would consider the historic component of the building. There is also the 1949 annex that Jonathan mentioned that would be torn down. And the last and possibly greatest problem is around the scope of this building. If we add the replacement to the annex and the extra two wings as in the design shown here, we dwarf the bachelor itself. And the historic components of that building really do get lost to the town. And there's a concern that in trying to save the bachelor as a school, what we really actually do is destroy it. Thank you. Um, and just to clarify on uh, when we were doing introductions, if, if the town were to approve question two and, and everything went forward with the batch renovation and you had specific schematics on a design, this design specifically, what is the role of your group in approving? Do you, basically, do you have final say on this as sort of the way that I was? We have, I guess I would call it one of the final says. As, as Jonathan alluded to, we're not the only group, but what does happen Anything that is going to affect a building or a part of the historic district, and in North Reading, that's the center village, which is the batch across to the third meeting house, across to the library, and a few other buildings there as well, is we would review the plan once it is presented to us, and then we would take a formal vote based on what I talked about earlier, the scope, the height, the size, and, and all of that. It is relatively unlikely at this point that this design or something noticeably similar would be one that we would be able to approve. I can't say definitively because we don't have a formal proposal, but it is extremely likely at this point that that design or something like it, we would decline, which unfortunately would send the town back to the drawing board. Thank you. All right, uh, one question. Now, another question I have, and it's actually a question about school space in general, elementary school space. Is there really a need? The questions come up uh, both last week, it came up in, in uh, our candidates' Q&A, and it's come up across town. Do we really need this additional space? And so I'm going to direct that at the school committee members. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> we do. I, I think if, if, if you drive through town and you see modulus sitting out there, that's one indication that we need additional space. And there are more modulars probably on the way. And that's now, that's, that's currently. But I think what needs to be emphasized is that we don't only need additional space. Because the enrollment we have at the elementary school level right now is going to average out around 230 kids per, per grade, K through 5. And it's going to stay that way for about seven or eight years. So already, we're behind. Now, when I say average about 230, next year, from this year to the next year, we're going to have about 70 additional kids. Uh, but what people have to understand is it's not just about additional space, it's about replacement space. And I think that's really important. It's not just additional classrooms, it's to replace the batch elder school. So that the, the, what we have at the batch right now is inadequate, insufficient, and not fair to the kids that are enrolled in that district. So yes, we need additional space. Yes, we need replacement space. And again, I, I think uh, if you look at the projected enrollments, um, and again, 230 is a pretty good figure to use. Next year, we're going to average about 230 kids per grade, K through 5. Uh, that's a total of about 1,395 students. This year, we have about 1,326. So you can see there's a 70-student increase just for next year. 
interesting enough, this is going to hold fairly steady over the next six or seven or eight years with a slight increase uh, a few years from now, and then it's going to start to come back again to about this average. Um, the elementary school class sizes, uh, just so that we can, uh, again, make that clear for everybody, um, except for kindergarten, we're over 20 and significantly over 20 per class size this year and next year. So there's no, this average of 17 students per class is ridiculous. It's been pointed out to me that uh, I think that, uh, what was the source that? Um, uh, mass education. Has, that has us down for 18.2 kids per class in the elementary school level. And that's a reflection of the total number of elementary students divided by the total number of teachers. So that would be dividing that by art teachers and technology teachers and music teachers and things of that nature. The average class size is probably next year going to be in the vicinity of 23, I would guess, and Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's, that's about the average class size, K through 5. So again, to answer your question, there's absolutely a need for additional space, there's a need for replacement space. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Amy, do you have a question? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to hammer on that point a little bit because it's something that we're hearing a lot in the community in terms of um, why don't we tighten our belts a little bit, deal with this crunch in the enrollment, and a few years down the line we'll be okay again is sort of what we're hearing and, and there's a fear in the community that we'll open up a new school and then we're going to be closing it down a few years from now. Um, so I think there's need for, if you have any visuals or, that you might be able to provide or something that would show people, um, A, the need for uh, this space now and, and a few years into the future. Um, and also maybe, Jerry, if you could elaborate a little bit in terms of why we need additional space in the classrooms. Um, there was a time in this community when we had large enrollment figures mm -hmm. as well that we got by with smaller classrooms. If you could talk a little bit educationally about the type of programs that exist now and why there is a need for larger class sizes. I think to answer your second question first, I defer to Steve to answer that uh, as far as the, uh, the additional space of the actual classroom itself. There are a number of factors involved. and. They start with the fact that a lot more is being done in the classrooms than ever before. Um, you, we expect people to be doing hands-on learning in a number of areas. We talk about manipulatives, things that people can actually put their hands on and work with. Doing science experiments in the classroom. Now, when I was in elementary school, we didn't even have science. Uh, but that was, you know, I. I was still in elementary school when Sputnik went up, so uh, you, can, <laughs> you can figure that. But even, even later, what was done in the classrooms was very modest. Uh, it has grown dramatically. If you go into an elementary classroom now and see what they're doing in the science areas and the amount of space it takes, the little school has an annual science fair. Um, the work that these kids are doing and the, the amount of space it takes is enormous. And it's not just science where they're doing these kinds of projects. They're doing projects in social studies. They're doing projects in math. It's not just filling out numbers on a sheet of paper anymore. Um, there are computers that they're working with in the classrooms. And it's not like we have a computer for every person. Uh, most of our classrooms have one. Occasionally, an elementary classroom has uh, uh, access to more than one computer, but it's very rare. And we have a computer lab in each of the schools, but the, the individual classrooms generally have one computer, but it takes some space. The individual classrooms have far more books than they had when I was in elementary school. Um, I remember there being a shelf, and there were enough books for each kid to borrow one. Uh, if people wanted to borrow more than one, they had to return the first one, because otherwise there weren't enough to go around. Take a look at the uh, books that have been accumulated by the teachers the kids get to choose from. And it's important that they have those choices because it isn't so much what they read that matters as that they do read. So you have to have books that will attract the interests of different kids. Um, you break the kids into groups for small group work in a way that we never did when I was in elementary school. If I was talking to another kid in school, I was in trouble. I was doing something I wasn't supposed to do. And nowadays, we want them working together. And at the bachelor school, the classrooms are so small that to have that kind of work opportunity, the kids are usually working out in the corridors, which creates a supervisory problem for the teachers. 
uh, it also creates traffic problems. Uh, when, uh, if you go into the classrooms on a winter day, the coats are hanging on the backs of chairs, they're sitting on tops of the bookshelves. Uh, getting around is your first problem. It's not easy to do. We don't have things regimented with desks and straight lines. Uh, we're never going to go back to that. Educationally, it's not sound. It doesn't work, it didn't work, and it's not going to happen again. Uh, so we need the space, and that's why the state guidelines recommend elementary classrooms 900 to 1,000 square feet. And you'll see if, 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 if the numbers that Jonathan presented on his slide, average classroom size at the Hood and the Little, 969 square feet. At the bachelor school, 700 and some odd square feet, and some of those classrooms are less than 600 square feet. It is a disaster educationally. This is why the kids are doing so much work in the corridors. Um, we have to have that extra space in the classrooms so that the kids can be properly supervised, so that they can do the kinds of things that we expect them to be able to do if they're going to succeed not only on um, tests like the MCAS that the state has given us, but also just in, in generally in life. We work together in groups. We don't go into our office and turn out our product without talking to other people. Um, it's, it's just not the way thing is, life is lived anymore. So that's a that's I'm glad I deferred that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, in addition to, I mean, you can see from the, the size of the classrooms in the new proposed schools, we can't even get reimbursement unless they meet those standards established by, you know, the Department of Education. So the size is imperative that we, and it's not us making this up, it's, it's other people a lot smarter than us saying we need 950, 960 square feet. As far as class size, again, that's not coming from us either. I mean, the ideal of the standard now has been established, I guess, in probably the low 20s to mid 20s for an elementary school size. Uh, so, as far as enrollment figures, I do have some um, overheads here that I can show you. The first one I'm going to show you is the enrollment by grade in the elementary school right now. Um, and as you can see, this reflects pretty much this year and next year. And you can see the average class size is bordering on 230. The fifth grade is a little bit smaller. Um, but the overall increase is about 70 students between now and next year. Now, what I don't have an overhead for is the projection of the elementary class, I'm sorry, the elementary school population over the next seven or eight years. What's very interesting is that the, the numbers you see there are pretty much what it's going to be over the next seven or eight years, with a bump going up, you know, somewhat over 1,400 in a couple of years. But that's where we're at now. Right now, we need the space. And to answer Amy's question, if the figures are going to be the same over the next eight years, we're going to need the space over the next eight years, and that's as far as we project it out. So this, this is not a situation where we're going to, as some people may speculate or think, that we're going to build a brand new school in a few years from now, somewhat like happened in the 70s at times, we're not going to need the school anymore. That's not the case. And I can't stress enough that in addition to uh, additional space, we need the replacement space. So that has to be replaced. I'm also going to show you again the average class size so you get some idea of where we're at with that. And that's again K through 5. And you can see that next year, based on some of the decisions the school committee had to make as a result of budgetary problems, that the average class size for the most part is going to be larger next year, with again the exception of the fifth grade, which because of the number forced us to basically put another teacher in there, the class would have been much too, uh, the class would have been much too large. Uh, so that's where we're at. You can see that as far as being under uh, 20 students next year, the only grade that that's going to happen is going to be uh, is kindergarten, which I think it's imperative that it's under 20 students. And then I'm going to show you something. This is projected enrollment K through 12. This is interesting. Because what you can see here is that the, although starting with right here basically 2001 2002 <coughs> that the elementary school population is going to be pretty much uh, the same over the next seven or eight years you can see what happens to the overall school populations and it goes up from you know an, uh, right now about uh, 2500 to up to almost 2900 2850 and this increase is going to be reflected in the middle school and the high school and I, I can't stress enough how important it is to address that now 
We have on the ballot, in addition to the Swan 